I hope you can see my screen. Yes, we can see the screen. Excellent, excellent. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining the virtual Open House Day for Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. So we wish to have you face to face, and uh, of course, one day we'll have this uh, physical uh, attendance in the university. So uh, thank you very much for joining this day, and uh, welcome to the, the event, really. So my name is Isam Shahab. I'm a professor of digital manufacturing and the head of mechanical and aerospace engineering department. With me, uh, as uh, Lunara mentioned, we have four other professors in, from the department who we'll take you through all the elements within the mechanical and aerospace engineering department in terms of programs and what we are doing in the, in the department. Just uh, if you don't mind, if you can uh, mute your microphone until we finish you know, our presentation, and then if you have any questions, you can put this in the chat box uh, or you can raise your hand and then we'll answer your question. So in this uh, presentation, we have a number of elements. Uh, so I will give introduction about the department and the university. Uh, then my colleagues uh, will talk about different programs. So we have three programs in the department. And uh, we'll take you through all of these programs in details. And then uh, also we'll look at the mechanical aerospace engineering uh, laboratories and we'll give you an idea what we are doing in the, in the department. Sorry. Uh, so as an overview of the university, uh, you know, as you are aware, so the first president of the country of Kazakhstan, uh, President Nazarbayev, he created this university with a, with a huge vision for the country to have a, a world-class university and to compete with other universities in the world. And so far, you can see very successful, uh, you know, outcome from this university. And there is a huge, uh, like, you know, impact of, uh, this university on the country. So you can see that it's very lovely campus uh, and the wish to, to go back to this campus after this uh, current crisis. And really it is, uh, it is the world-class uh, facilities. You will see it uh, later on in the presentation. So the university has uh, seven schools. Uh, one of this school is the School of Engineering and Digital Sciences. This is the largest school in the university. And of course, you know, engineering in, in, other, in any university is a major school uh, with other schools, of course, like medicine and other schools. Uh, so the university has, as I mentioned, world-class uh, like, you know, facilities. Like, you know, if you see these pictures, you can see the, you know, library and even the library, I, ha I haven't seen it. I came from the UK, uh, from my university in the UK. Uh, so I have in these huge facilities in the library with very modern areas, relaxing area for students, studying area for students. Is really it is it is excellent what I have seen in the university there. Uh, and of course the, the university has different facilities like you know you know the gym and sports hall. Uh, also they have very good accommodation. Uh, food is amazing there in the university. So and this in addition to our educational side. So. You have the you know lecture side, and also you have the educational side within the campus. So it is the campus is like you know it's very modern. It's you know if you live in the campus twenty four seven, you will feel always like entertained within this campus. It is very good uh, you know design. So for mechanical aerospace, uh, of course, as you are aware, this is a, you know, mechanical engineering is the oldest and the broadest subject or discipline in engineering. And it has huge impact on our lives. Everywhere in your life, you can see around you at home or outside or traveling. So you will see the impact of mechanical engineers. So, you know, you can see they are designed, create and maintain everything around us from uh, automotive industry, like luxury cars, Rolls Royce, you can see in this picture. Uh, also like aerospace, all of us who are traveling using aeroplane. Also like space industry, like Galam in, in, in Kazakhstan, 
uh, train companies, uh, like food industry even. So everywhere in any company, so they need mechanical engineer. And even some of my students they are working in Amazon. So Amazon is an online you know, company. And I have many students working in Amazon, for example, they are mechanical engineers. Uh, so any discipline, any company, they need mechanical engineer. Uh, that's why I think you know it would be great to join us uh, to have this impact on our lives in Kazakhstan and all over the world. So the mechanical aerospace uh, engineering department has you know very international team. So they are coming from different parts of the world, which makes like you know the department very rich. Uh, like I, I mentioned, I came from the UK myself. Uh, some of my colleagues came from uh, like, you know, uh, France or Greece or Spain or Egypt. Uh, so, and, and other countries as well. So you, ca you can see, uh, you know, it's very international team. And this is why it makes the diversity is very strong and you will learn from the best, uh, you know, of professors in the world. And this professor has been selected really at the top, the top professor in the world. So you will have interaction with them to take you through all mechanical engineering, you know, knowledge to, to enhance, you know, all of this discipline in your career and then have a good employment. So the department uh, has uh, five research groups. And you try to have you know these groups to, in different areas in mechanical aerospace engineering. You, you can see here like aerospace engineering uh, group, which look after all of the aerospace structures, materials, you know, aeroplanes. Uh, then you have engineering design materials and the manufacturing. Look at you know 3D printing, digital manufacturing, you know, and, and other areas of manufacturing and design. Then you have very interesting area about bioengineering. Uh, look at the like you know, breast cancer, uh, you know, in a, of other you know bioengineering areas, and this is a very important area because even like you know there's a across uh, across link between like bioengineering and aerospace. For example, like you know the recent uh, aircraft which is under design now by Airbus, uh, it will be using bioengineering, like how to learn from from birds when they fly different wings and so on. And the uh, applied mechanics group as well. So I look at the advanced control uh, systems and then the energy and thermofluids. Uh, look at all of the wind energy, um, analysis from design, uh, competition through the structure. So this is again, uh, you'll see the department are very active in research. And the, like, like nearly all of the professors in the department, they have research, gro research groups, they have, uh, they have research projects, they are very active in publications. And you will see uh, some of these examples uh, later on in the presentation and they will hear from one of our students. Uh, if you are interested about research and you to know about the, the department from research, you can see in the link here, if you open this link, you will see a lot of uh, you know, projects running by the department, also publication done by students under the supervision of my colleagues. So as I mentioned, we have three, uh, three main programs. So we have undergraduate program, the BNG in mechanical aerospace, then we have MSc in mechanical aerospace engineering, and we have PhD in mechanical engineering. So my colleagues uh, will take you through all of these uh, three programs. So we'll start with the BN, uh, Mechanical and Aerospace uh, Engineering, and the Professor Costas will lead this uh, area. Okay, thank you, Professor Sehab, for the, the introduction. And let me, uh, first of all, welcome all the attendants in, in this webinar. Uh, the first thing I would like to mention about the, the Bachelor in um, Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering is that uh, we have recently restructured the program. Uh, to be more accurate, um, three years ago, uh, we restructured the program so that it can be ABED compliant. And this means that we have uh, a very modern program that uh, satisfies the, the highest uh, requirements. 
Uh, the first thing I would like to mention about that is that uh, we have introduced uh, five teaching areas. So the ones that you are seeing here on, on this particular slide. Uh, so the thermofluids and energy applications, materials and manufacturing, design and analysis, system dynamics and control, and of course, aerospace engineering, which if you have noticed, they are in alignment with the research areas of, of the department. Uh, maybe we can move on to the next slide. Uh, so we, we have a four year program and we begin the first year uh, by delivering mainly uh, courses that um, are helping you with uh, the general professional skills that are required for any engineer. So the first year courses uh, are considered core courses uh, they contribute to your general knowledge and building of the foundations that are required so that you can later, uh, during the second year, the third year, and of course, the, the senior year, to, to develop uh, your interests, your skills, your knowledge in the teaching areas that I have mentioned. Uh, in, in every semester, uh, we, have, we are offering uh, five courses, as, as you can see. There is an opportunity for additional courses. And of course, during uh, the third year and especially the fourth year, we have a wide range of elective courses uh, that can help you to, to deepen your knowledge in, in specific areas. Now, if we move uh, to the first year, uh, let me very quickly mention that the, the introduction to engineering, uh, programming for engineering, the calculus courses, uh, physics, and of course, some, some other additional uh, courses like the history of Kazakhstan and rhetoric and composition and things like that uh, contribute to, to the foundations and the, the general professional skills that are required. And as we move into the second year courses, we gradually begin to introduce uh, courses that are specific to the teaching areas that I have mentioned. So we begin with engineering materials that comes from the materials and manufacturing teaching area. Uh, and if we move uh, to the, um, <clears throat> we also uh, move to this design and analysis teaching area with the computer aided design, and, and other courses from the general professional skills like engineering, mathematics, environmental chemistry, and, and other courses that you see on this particular slide. Now, if we move uh, to the third and final year, uh, we have uh, a plethora of courses that are aligned with the teaching areas that I have mentioned before. Uh, we have the, the thermofluids, so fluid mechanics, engineering thermodynamics, uh, heat transfer, and several, um, several elective courses that I will mention later. From the mat materials and manufacturing uh, teaching area, we have the structural mechanics uh, and versions of the materials and manufacturing that I have mentioned previously. Uh, Computer-aided engineering, machine elements design, mechanical system designs, and we move forward to system dynamics and control where we have engineering dynamics, control systems, uh, and several other elective courses. Uh, aerospace engineering, we have the thermodynamics, engineering thermodynamics, once again, fluid mechanics, which are closely related to, to aerospace uh, and other electives. So let me very quickly uh, move on to electives and discuss uh, very briefly this list of, of electives. Uh, from, from the aerospace uh, teaching area, we have aerodynamics, flight mechanics, vehicle propulsion systems, as I have mentioned previously. Uh, for the thermo, thermo fluids and energy applications, the advanced heat transfer, fire engineering, uh, air conditioning, heating and ventilation, uh, clean energy technologies, and we move forward to, to materials and manufacturing again, where we have more advanced courses in structural mechanics and materials and manufacturing, including uh, methods for ma manufacturing, uh, some more advanced courses in, in design and analysis, 
so computational fluid dynamics, uh, computer-aided geometric design, and of course, uh, control and system dynamics, which include fundamentals of multi-body dynamics, oscillations of systems, uh, industrial automation, and, and many more other. Uh, at the end, so during the, the fourth year, uh, students are required to, to have their capstone project, which combines all the knowledge uh, that has been attained through the years and come up with something innovative, uh, which could be a, a stepping stone for your future career or even your further academic studies. Uh, that's, that's all from my side. So if you have any questions, you can either ask now or maybe uh, later at the end. So thank you very much. Thank you much, Kostas, for this. And now we'll move to uh, MSc in Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. So Professor Christos. Uh, so uh, thank you, uh, Professor Sehab. Uh, when it comes to the master program, uh, the purpose uh, here is uh, to uh, go deeper, much deeper. And by that, we mean a particular emphasis on uh, research in order to build a professional and scientific excellence. And now, normally, uh, people join us, um, uh, a, a number of people join us uh, for after graduating from the bachelor program at Nazarbayev University, but we have a lot of students coming from other universities in Kazakhstan and the world. And uh, what we build, therefore, uh, is, uh, is a community of people with uh, different backgrounds, but with a, uh, with a common feature that uh, they already have a very good background uh, that, uh, in mechanical um, and aerospace engineering or something close enough to that. Uh, we have, uh, uh, it is a two-year uh, program, 120 uh, credits. And uh, it uh, allows people, first of all, to focus on specific courses, as you see here on this screen. And uh, at the same time, then it can explore via a number of electives, three research areas. Uh, the idea here is that uh, the students will work closely with, uh, with uh, particularly one professor that they will in the beginning get to know and then choose. So the first year is dedicated towards uh, mostly the, the core courses uh, with a few electives. Uh, but uh, the, during this period, the students get exposure to the research uh, work of the different research groups uh, in our department. And uh, then uh, the, in the second half of the first year, they are asked to make a proposal for a final thesis and uh, find a supervisor. Uh, for this thesis uh, from among the faculty. So that means that during the second year, while the students are still actively uh, pursuing uh, elective courses uh, to, uh, to deepen their understanding in several important areas, uh, they focus and they spend quite a lot of uh, effort uh, on the master thesis, which is split in two semesters. Uh, and uh, that culminates in a final defense and presentation. What you can see in this slide is also in more detail uh, the, the various uh, core and elective courses. In the core courses, you will see um, in depth, uh, going into depth into all the areas that you would associate with mechanical and aerospace uh, engineering. Uh, I don't need to, to recite the titles, you can see them already. When it comes to the four elective uh, uh, courses that eventually students will get to, to select, you again, you see the three uh, areas uh, of focus of the, of the department. Uh, within these uh, students will have, there is quite a lot of choice, within these students can actually choose to specialize in, uh, in something. And that's pretty much the story of the master program. Thank you much, Christos. And I, I would like to add as well, you know, our students are great, really, like, you know, they are very keen to publish conference and journal publications. You know, it, it's like really, it is very good uh, strategy within the university and the school and the department to engage the students in their uh, you know, uh, research with, with faculty members and they publish you know, you know, very good uh, you know, output in terms of conference and journal paper. So now we'll move to a PhD in mechanical engineering. So Professor Luis, he will take over this uh, program. Thank you, Professor Hassan. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to this presentation. Uh, as my colleagues have introduced their bachelor's and master program, I will introduce the PhD program in mechanical engineering. 
And the PhD program in mechanical engineering is a program that is uh, strongly uh, based on research. There is one year of courses and three years on research. It's a relation of three to one. And the research areas are essentially presented in the slide uh, based on the areas of uh, research of interest in our department. And uh, the courses taken in the first year also are related to uh, core courses and some electives that I will uh, also introduce in the next slides. So the structure of the program is essentially a four year program that has a total of 240 ECTS credits. And the first year is uh, composed of the first two semesters plus summer. And in this first year, as you may notice in the left top of the slide, we have uh, first semester two core courses and three elective courses and second semester two core courses and three elective courses. The core courses that you are going to be taking in these two semesters are listed in the right top part of the slide. And uh, essentially, they are research method and ethics, which uh, will be an introductory course to uh, review uh, techniques and approaches for doing research, both in experimental and numerical field. And uh, the core courses also include the thesis research that will be in your uh, uh, calendar every semester until the end of the program. And during the courses taken, you must be aware that you have to keep a minimum uh, cumulative GPA to, uh, to be in the program, which is B minus, which is reasonable for a, a, a student that is in graduate level. And at the end of the first year, uh, all PhD students uh, in the mechanical and all disciplines in the school, they must uh, pass the subject qualifying exam, which is a qualifying exam to uh, determine your preparation on the background, theoretical background, before proceeding to the second, third, fourth year. And uh, the, there are some special notes that you must be aware of. At the end of the first year is when you are formally uh, asked to complete uh, uh, the formalization of your supervisory committee uh, for the PhD thesis. And the supervisory committee is composed by Hi. your lead super. Hello? Can you hear me? Okay, uh, the supervisory committee is composed by lead supervisor, which is a faculty from the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, uh, internal co-supervisor, which is a faculty from any other department of our school, or uh, even from the school of uh, the university, and the external uh, co-supervisor, which is a faculty from any university from abroad, or external to any and this is a good um, point because you will have a strong supervisory committee uh, backing your research up. So you will be working, becoming an independent researcher, but you will have all the times uh, a company, the company of uh, a staff of faculty that will be uh, helping you to coordinate and develop your thesis work. And um, another point uh, is that uh, the core courses that you can you will take in the first uh, two semesters are listed in the left part of the slide in the columns, as you see, uh, research methods, thesis research, and current research literature. And then the elective courses are courses that uh, you will pick from either our department, preferentially, and uh, the list of elective courses that the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering uh, offers currently are those listed in the second and third column in your slide, but we are also open to let you take electives from other departments according to the necessity of your research and by permission of the department graduate committee. And um, at the end of the program, you have to uh, defend your thesis uh, in front of uh, examiners, uh, internal and external examiners. And that uh, is the conclusion of the program when you approve the thesis. And during the process of doing your PhD, it's mandatory that you must produce at least one publication in a Scopus Q1 or Q2 journal as a lead author, which is a stamp of quality of our PhD uh, students, uh, which are uh, completed in our program. And uh, with this, I just uh, open for questions and Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. Thank you much, Luis. So now we'll move to our uh, mechanical and aerospace engineering laboratories. So Professor Hazrat Ali will take you through this. Uh, Thank you, Professor Shehab, uh, for, for introducing me. 
uh, welcome to uh, to mechanical and aerospace engineering labs. I mean, uh, you know, uh, the engineering is cool. I mean, these are very attractive things that we should have practical, you know, hands-on exper experiments, right? I mean, you have to make your hands dirty and to make your hands dirty and, you know, clean it again. So we have these laboratory laboratories in the uh, in our uh, department. So of course, there are many others uh, with uh, other department as well, but our key labs are here. We have this uh, aerospace engineering lab. We do have rapid prototyping. You can make uh, something with 3D printers, right? Uh, then we have fluid mechanics. We have industrial automation based on PLC controller. There's also <coughs> a robot with five degrees of freedom or six degrees of freedom. So we can work with you know, uh, complete automation system there. You have also thermal science laboratory. We do have machine dynamics laboratory. We have also machine design laboratory. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, then we have strength of materials lab. We have materials engineering laboratory, computer ed edit engineering laboratory, what we call CAE lab, okay? Uh, uh, in the next slide, you will have a you know, nice uh, uh, the video presentation about our labs. Mm -hmm. So please watch uh, and enjoy it, okay? Can you hear the video? Yeah, yeah, we can. Here are a few of the lab equipment you will see that they're doing experiments, you know, the hardness tester, UTS machines there, would have CNC machines, right? Very quick overview again. We have wind, wind tunnel as well. This is CNC machines. They are our lab assistants, so uh, they help us in case any students want to make something or want to use any machine. So they're ready to help you uh, any time. So, yeah. yeah, thank you. That's all from my side. So any question, uh, we'll we'll entertain you afterwards. I think. Thank you much. Thank you much, Professor. So uh, thanks to my colleagues who introduced the program to you. They are leading this area within the department. Also, I would like to mention as well our students' activities. Some of these activities, like for instance, the students, they have a student chapter of uh, IMKE, Institution of Mechanical Engineers at the university. And this is a group of students. They are very active in running some uh, conferences and so on. And th the IMKE is uh, based in the UK. Uh, but the students, they have a very good link with IMK in the UK and they are very keen to run uh, some of these activities. And uh, you can see in this picture, for example, here, Professor Louise is giving a talk on the conference here. And this some of the students during you know, other uh, activities as well. So you will have the opportunity to engage with these students and to create you know, uh, this link with institution in maybe in UK, in US and so on. But this one of the examples of the activity of the students uh, at the department. Uh, also, we, we invite uh, always the external speakers uh, to talk to our students. Uh, so like, you know, last year, uh, I invited, uh, you know, Mark Hallowell from Rolls-Royce. He is one of the senior manager in, in the company to talk about, you know, Rolls-Royce and about aerospace industry and how the company uh, like, you know, uh, contributing to aerospace in, in, in developing the engine, for example, for the aircraft. Like if you see this picture, they have A380 behind him, which is like, you know, very large aircraft, it's millions of components. And uh, it is really uh, you know, one of the leading, you know, companies in the world. 
So we are aiming to invite, you know, always speakers from Airbus, Rolls Royce, and other, you know, companies to talk to our students. This is the uh, some of the talks, and also uh, during, the, you know, different, you know, courses, we also invite industrial speakers, especially for master programs because it's like more uh, like near to to industry. Uh, so you will see this opportunity during your time uh, in the department. Uh, you will have a very successful career uh, in, in your life, really, if you join mechanical and aerospace engineering department. Uh, so you will see, you know, every industry, they need mechanical engineers, like, you know, uh, even construction industry, like BI group, they need mechanical engineers. Uh, consultancy companies, as I mentioned, uh, and even Amazon is online company, but still need mechanical engineers. So you can look at some of these companies in the slide here from aerospace, Air Astana, for example, to construction, to oil and gas companies. So this is because the mechanical and aerospace is a wide area. So you can join one of these uh, companies. So we'd like to listen from one of our students. So I, I would like to thank Azamat really for joining this, uh, this uh, conference here and this event. So Azamat will, will talk to you about his experience in, in mechanical and aerospace uh, engineering. He's an undergraduate student, final year, and also the research assistant at the same time. So over to you, Azamat. Thank you, Professor. So I'm a bachelor fourth year student, and I'm here to tell you about my student experience or student perspective on studying at Nazarbayev University of Mechanical Engineering major. Firstly, I think that in this university in general, and mechanical and aerospace engineering in particular, there are tons of opportunities to get to know different fields. As you already were shown, the alumni, alumni are working in different areas. And with this degree, I think we potentially can work practically everywhere. You can work, for example, in oil and gas, aircraft, automotive industries, manufacturing, consulting, and many other fields. And this is because you can get, get a taste to different areas while studying the variety of courses that this program offers. And in the end, I believe that uh, I had an opportunity to obtain a good variety of skills that I can use in my future career when applying for a job or graduate degrees. Also, there are many events organized by the school and student clubs, which I was also part of. And in these events, such as field trips to the companies, guest talks, and many others, uh, me and my friends, we had uh, many chances to know the industry and talk with people who are actually working there. And uh, in addition to that, there have been many competitions also conducted by the university students where we have participated. They were conducted together with uh, local companies who provide like real life cases so that students can uh, practice their problem solving skills, uh, other technical skills, communication, soft skills, and also to implement the knowledge that they obtained during their courses. Uh, me personally, when I first arrived here, I didn't really know what I liked or what I was interested in. But now at my fourth year, I think that I have developed an interest towards manufacturing and the design, mechanical design side. So I'm now doing research work in this area in the powder manufacturing with Professor Spitas. We are now planning to publish a paper. And this university is a research, is a highly focused on research. So I think that we have a good opportunities to publish papers in academic journals. For example, some of us have already published articles in top journals or conferences. And also in our mechanical department, yes, there are many professors that you saw who work in different fields. And uh, you can see them on the websites. And uh, one of them might be actually interesting for you. And overall, in the university, we have a good environment, lab facilities, machine shops that can help in, the, in this research work. For example, in the techno park, there are many facilities that are available for students so they can use it almost any time. And many companies are actually working there, so they are collaborating with the undergraduate graduate students 
for instance, uh, some of my groupmates were working on the automated drones construction with the local company. Others are, for example, making an electric car for international student competitions. And as a part of my courses, I had chances to work on uh, building my own uh, small robot. And also I had an opportunity to work in the well, good laboratories with uh, 3D printers, CNC machines, and other top machinery, which I guess uh, otherwise I wouldn't have access to. Uh, we have a lot of opportunities to get internships, uh, practice interviews in the uh, top companies like VI Group, Schlumberger, Castroncell, and many others. And I think that uh, some of you might be actually intimidated by this amount of things to focus on because uh, many people understand, do not clearly understand what mechanical engineers do, as did I when I uh, first arrived here. What I mean is that there are many different courses and tracks like fluid mechanics, manufacturing and design, mechatronics, and many others, but we're actually getting a lot of help on that. And I think that uh, all of this, uh, all this wide range of opportunities, like uh, the academic, industrial, practical opportunities, all of these are essential things that the university and this department have offered to us so that each, each one of us can understand clearly what is best suited for him and then develop in this direction. And uh, in the end, I would say that there are many available chances to succeed in this university that it provides and it is only a matter of exploring them. So uh, that was part of my experience. I hope it was useful. Thank you much. Azamati. And now, yes, I would like to leave. Yeah, thank you much, Azamat. You know, it's very useful indeed, of course. And as Azamat mentioned, really, uh, like, you know, having undergraduate students uh, publish, uh, you know, journal and conference paper is excellent. I have been in academia for 35 years. This is the first time in, in a leading university like Mazar Baif to have a student publication as undergraduate students or master's students. And also, as as I mentioned, even electrical cars, even mechanical engineer, uh, like you know, the future aerospace electrical aircraft, also they need mechanical engineers. And I have seen this with the companies like Airbus and Rolls Royce. Uh, so I, I would like to thank you all for uh, listening to this presentation, and uh, welcome any question. If you have any question, uh, you can ask us now. Uh, so there are some questions that are in Russian. I cannot read Russian, of course. Uh, but if you have any question, you can unmute your microphone and ask the question. Dear Professor Sazamat, thank you very much for this brilliant presentation. It was very interesting and useful. Dear participants, uh, please welcome to ask the questions. And after the Q&A session, we will have a quiz So, please be active, please participate. Дорогие участники, вы можете задавать свои вопросы на русском, на казахском языке, мы сможем перевести ваши вопросы, и вы сможете узнать всю информацию из, так сказать, первых рук от наших профессоров. So, please, you know, if you have any question, you can ask us now. Um, hello, and I want to ask a question yes. about mechanical and aerospace engineering. Is there a lot of opportunities in Kazakhstan about it? Uh, of course, you, you have a lot of opportunities in Kazakhstan. As I told you, uh, like, you know, it is like in all the industries in the country, like, you know, aerospace, you have Air Astana and other airlines. You have, uh, you know, construction industry, VI Group. Uh, so you have oil and gas companies, you have consultancy companies. So all of this, they need mechanical engineer and they, Even you can see some of these students in this picture, for example, here. Uh, I had a project with Air Astana, and the man in the middle here, he was a director in the company. He offered them job immediately after the project. So three students took the, did not uh, take the offer because they have other opportunities. Only one, she took the offer. So I managed she took the offer, and now she's working in Air Astana. So you have a lot of opportunities. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned in the beginning, like, you know, Mechanical aerospace is a wide area. So you can work in different industries. And they, of course, you will see this opportunity uh, in the country. 
Uh, Professor Sahab, there is a question in the chat box regarding the, the undergraduate program. So yes, if I may. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, so the question uh, reads that how many credit, credits are required for undergraduate students to participate in research projects? Uh, there is no limitation uh, regarding credits. However, there are uh, two rules. So the first one is that the, the student uh, has to have a good academic studying, right? So no problems with his or her progress in, in the studies. And formally, he or she can join a research project starting from the third year of studies. Uh, however, uh, sometimes uh, students can also informally join earlier to, to get themselves familiar with uh, the research topics and uh, when they reach the third year of studies and they have a good academic studying, standing, they can formally join. Thank you so much. Uh, any other questions? Can I ask some yes. questions? First of all, thank you for your presentations, dear professors. I'm the applicant for the program Aerospace and Mechanical Engineering. And I'd like to know uh, what internship programs or opportunities in the astronautics industry does the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering offer to its undergraduate students? Thank you very much. I think again, it's a very interesting question. Uh, so maybe I can ask my colleagues to answer this question. And okay, uh, let, me, let me just uh, first of all mention that uh, uh, a great majority of the research projects that we carry uh, are done in, in collaboration with, with industries. So in, in the context of the research projects, uh, you have the opportunity to directly work uh, with, with industries in, in, the, in the area. And this area is quite broad, as we have already mentioned. Now, regarding internships, uh, so there was some, some years ago some formal requirement for an internship. But right now, in the, in the new uh, program that we are uh, following, uh, the internship is, is an optional component, right? Meaning that it is up to you whether you would like to, to take part and uh, do your internship in, in an industry which is related, of course, to, to our topics or not. So th the opportunity is there, but it's not mandatory. Maybe I can also add something because I think the, the question was specifically to astronautics. Uh, there is uh, a number of our students uh, who uh, intern at Gallam. This is the Kazakh uh, space satellite manufacturer. And uh, there is, uh, uh, I think every year it is not unusual to have something like five or six students uh, going through Gallam in some sort of uh, summer internship. Like Professor Costas already mentioned, this is an initiative taken by the students. The university will not formally uh, for students in one internship uh, or the other, but it is quite possible. Thank you much, Christos. Uh, okay, thank other... you for your answers. So, in other questions, so feel free to ask a question. This is your opportunity, really. So, we have you know some time for any other questions, and we would like to listen to you. In other questions. Uh, can I ask one question? <clears throat> yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, let me introduce myself. I am Aitugan Saktaganov. I'm currently working in the uh, uh, company, space-related company, and um, willing to participate in PhD program. But uh, I'd like to cl clarify a couple uh, moments. Uh, when you're saying that... Uh, uh, I mean, your faculty uh, is a mechanical and aerospace engineering um, discipline. This aerospace engineering means that the mechanical part of aerospace engineering, as I understood. Yes. Uh, and uh, 
I mean, uh, you do not uh, uh, consider uh, such thing like onboard computers or resistance to the uh, ionic emissions, uh, etc. Uh, you consider only the um, mechanical parts, fluids, and etc. But uh, do you uh, have any plans? Um, uh, to expand your uh, field of uh, uh, expertise toward uh, those I mentioned, because uh, well, uh, uh, my main interest was actually this uh, onboard computing uh, devices, and uh, I was uh, hoping to uh, take part in PhD program and. Uh, make some project related to, to this. And second question is, um, uh, you know, the, uh, except Ghalam, we have a Baikirek company in Kazakhstan, which is uh, engaged in create, uh, creation of uh, uh, space launchers, I mean, uh, with Russian companies. And is there any interaction with uh, this company? Okay, so I, I will ask my colleague Luis to answer the question. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you for for question uh, 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 about this. Uh, the program, as uh, as I mentioned, uh, is uh, based strongly on research, and we have three to one uh, ratio on research versus top courses. And research areas in the department are based on the faculty that we currently are associated with, and. Uh, uh, the, the point is the following, the research that you will embrace after you uh, complete the first year of courses will have uh, to be uh, supervised by lead supervisor from our department. And the lead supervisor of our department may appoint with you a co-supervisor from another department, for, for example, from computer science, if the lead supervisor has uh, the background expertise on your major uh, topic of research, and you will need to appoint also an external co-supervisor that may have also uh, added background to the subject of the, of the topic. What I would say is that the topic itself must be of uh, interest and a, a contact uh, directly with the lead supervisor. Uh, if your subject is on electronics, uh, avionics, or uh, anything that probably is on that field, I believe that you might be need to consider uh, probably the PhD in electrical engineering or computer science and having mechanical engineering as a co-supervisor of your project. But uh, depending on the subject, again, uh, if the subject uh, is uh, within the areas of research in our department, I think Professor Sam, you have the list of uh, areas of research that we have uh, mentioned uh, that should fit uh, and that will be considered actually in the admission uh, committee. In the admission of the uh, applicants, we will consider the match uh, between the interest of the applicant and the background of the applicant and the program itself. And as if you can recall the slide about the program, the department areas of research, we have thermal fluids, we have energy engineering, we have uh, also, I cannot, like probably the slides need to go back to the to the part of uh, so I would say the key word is that the thesis topic has to be I think this is next 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 slide uh, the, the I think the first slide of the PhD here uh, the the PhD topic has to be within uh, any of these areas and it can have a strong component but not the major component out of these areas as far as the major component is within this area. So the lead supervisor can uh, take his role or her role. And as I said, we will have a supervisory committee that includes an internal co-supervisor and an external co-supervisor. These two members, they might add the extra uh, knowledge and extra background that might be needed. But the topic has to be within these major areas. Thank you very much, Luis. And uh, Christus, uh, about the second question. So do you work with other like you know, space companies? Uh, uh, yes, uh, with regard to that company, I personally have not had any collaboration. So I couldn't uh, speak for other colleagues. 
uh, I'm not sure if there is any activity at the level of Nazarbayev University, but I'm not aware of it. All right. So I think most of our work was gathered. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much for thank answering you. questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Welcome. Any other questions? I think there is something in the chat box. Uh, I think someone answered. Is it possible to have take more than six electrons? Yeah, I can yeah. I can add something yes, to that if you want. Yeah. Uh, so six is the minimum number of of electives so that one may graduate. This does not mean that if you are willing to invest additional time and take additional courses that you are not allowed to. All right. Thank you very much, Costas. Uh, so. If you don't have any questions, we can move now to the quiz. It's a very interesting one. Uh, so shall we move to the quiz now, Donara? Yes, of course. I suppose we can. Uh, I just I want... will stop. I will stop sharing. Yes, I will share my screen. But I want to also yes. add the mail of our... Uh, if you have any questions, you can write us. Here is the mail. So if you have any question regarding our programs or admission process, you can write us, we will answer you. So I'll try to start to share my screen. So let us start the, queen, uh, the quiz. First of all, the rules of the quiz. So we will have two blocks of questions, the multiple choice question and uh, the questions, is it a science or engineering? Dear participants, read the questions with the answer variants, write in the chat box all the nine answers in one message. It will be very convenient for us to find out who was the first. So the first two participants who will write all the right answers will get the prizes. Good luck to oh, everyone. You need to, you need, you need, you need to have the, the nine answers in one message. Is that right? Yes, yes. It will be more comfortable to find out who yes. was the first because the split at once, it's not really uh, it's convenient. Interesting. Yes. So the questions. The first question, Airbus A380 is the largest aircraft in the world. How many components, parts? Hey. <laughs> Next door. Next door. Mm -hmm. So here is the answers. A, 400,000, 2 million, 6 million, 10 million. The second question, how much is the price? Also note it for yourself. Uh, the next question, is there, a, uh, is there a limit limit of age to begin the master or PhD studies at Nazarbayev University? A, yes. B, no. C, for master's, no. For PhD, yes. D, for master's, yes. For PhD, no. So what is the age? Do we have a limit of age? The fourth question. Uh, so here are the master and PhD programs at Nazarbayev University only available on full-time dedication. A, yes. B, no. C, again, for master's, no. For PhD, yes. D, for master's, yes. For PhD, no. So we will start the block with the science or engineering questions. The fifth question, manipulate the forces of nature to advance humanity. It's a science or engineering, A or B. The sixth question, be able to answer why something is working. A, science, B, engineering. The seventh, build things so that you may learn, A, Science, B, engineering. The eighth question, learn things so that you may build A, science, B, engineering. 
And the last question, be able to answer how something is working. Learn things so that you may build A, science, B, engineering. Dear participants, if you need to go back to the previous slides, please write us, tell us. I will give you a couple of minutes to answer all the questions. So you need to have the answer in one go, in one message, all the answers. I will just move to previous slides. Maybe someone need more time. The first one was about the parts of aircraft. The second one was about the price. The third question is the age limitation of our graduate programs. The next is, is about the time that you need to dedicate to the studies. And the block with the science or engineering questions. So do we have something in chat box? Yes, thank you, dear participants, I can see. Let's move to the slide with the answers. The first one is C, 6 million. The second one is D, $450 million. The third one, there is no age limit to begin the master or PhD studies at Nazarbayev University. The fourth question is yes, the programs are full time. So. The fifth question, it's uh, engineering. The sixth is the science. Seven, science again. Eight, engineering, build product services. And nine is engineering. Let us check all the answers. I have something with my Zoom chat box. If I'm right, there is no, uh, all the right uh, answers. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that Mustahim was the closest. Let me check again.
Azamat has six points. Azamat has six points. So one point. So they have one, two, three, four, four points. Drop out. Uh -huh. um, Go for three points if I'm right. And half is a uh, one, two. Yes, Run six as well. So I think 
from my calculations, uh, I have as a mat the first one. I don't know, maybe my colleagues can correct as well. Yes, I calculated also as a mat has six. Yes. As a mat, and then the second one is AIT. At to run, at to run. At to run, yes, six, but. Mm -hmm. six as well six as well then the third one is uh not scott mustat uh no not, the, not this one it is no 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 not the uh, him the second yes. answer was uh corrected so we should <laughs> yes yes uh, no this is the one i think he, he, he tried in the beginning yeah so no, the, the second answer was not because after the question. Yes, yes. So this is a three now. So Azamat, Aitogan, and... Uh, Mustahim. 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 Mustahim, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, congratulations. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for participation. Dear Azamat, Aitogan, and Mahsat, could you please write me your emails? Uh, unfortunately, during this current time, uh, during this epidemiological situation, we cannot send the uh, prizes, but you can take it from me in Nursultan, or in Nursultan you can take it, or maybe you have someone, relatives, friends who is here. It's very interesting prizes, yes. Thank you. Azamat, I can see your email. I took one and uh, Mr. Kim, please. Mr. Kim, yes. Right. Thank you very much, uh, professors. It was so really interesting. I'm sure that it's very useful. Dear participants, this presentation, the recording of this event will be uploaded to our YouTube page and uh, you can find it there. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, thank, you much. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Leonardo. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you, my colleagues. Yeah. Thank you much. Thank you, Thank you as professor. much as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lewis. Thank you, Professor Thank Costas. You much, Thank you much. All. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you, Professor. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you much. As much as well. Thank you. Thank you much. Bye bye.